Hey everybody, Tanya with Shooting Star SVG back. Um, I know I have taken quite a long hiatus. I was on night shift for a refueling outage at the nuclear plant for a month and rolled right into this crazy pandemic. So I figured I'd give you guys something fresh and fun to play around with in Photoshop. Although I will be showing you how to do this in PhotoP, which you can apply the same ideas in Photoshop as well. Before I get started, if you haven't already, please go ahead and click like and subscribe below. That way you get updated for any new videos I do post on my channel. Today we are going to be going over how to make a camouflage-like pattern in PhotoP. Now keep in mind, these patterns are not seamless. Um, this is one that I had created earlier. Um, each one is different and unique every time that you go through this process and you can use you know, many different colors as well. So I just kinda wanna walk everybody through this. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Um, this has been fun for me to kinda play around with, but I'm gonna go ahead and just get started and cut to the chase here. So go ahead and open up PhotoP by going to photop.com and click on new project. You can see I already have my settings up here because I was playing around with it earlier. But you want to set your DPI to 300 um, if you're going to be using it for a digital paper or sublimation or something like that where people are going to be printing from with a width and height of 3600 pixels that will equate to 12 inches for those of you who um, cannot necessarily convert that at the top of your head. And just go ahead and click on create. The first thing that we're going to do is create a fill layer. You're going to go down here and click on new adjustment layer and click on color fill. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to like a brown color. So you just double click and then click on the box there. And the hex code that I'm using is 24180 echo. It's going to give you like a dark brown shade. The next thing we're going to do is go down here and click on new layer. This part is very important because if you do not do this, then everything that you do is permanent. We're going to turn this into a smart object. So to do that, go up to your new layer, right click and click on convert to smart object. The next thing that we are going to do is go to the filter menu. And then we're going to go down to render and then we're going to click on clouds. Okay. Not very camo -y yet, huh? <laughs> okay. So here is the next step. You're going to go back up to filter. You're going to click on blur and you're going to go to the Gaussian blur. I think that's how you pronounce it. And if it's not, I apologize in advance. Now, you don't want to change this too much, but the higher you pick your radius, the smoother your camo blobs are going to be. And the lower it is, the more jagged your blobs are going to be. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to 10 pixels for the blur. And you'll see that change as I have the preview. My computer's been a little bit laggy, so hopefully it'll be able to keep up today. Go ahead and click on OK. Once you're done with your... Um, Gaussian blur, you're going to go to image, adjustments, and then you're going to go down to threshold. Now this part you can play around with a little bit on the preview. The lower your threshold, the smaller your blobs are going to be, and the higher your threshold, the bigger they're going to be. So you can go ahead and play around with that in the program to see what works for you. And for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and see what 140 looks like. If it'll ever load. Whoops. That's not what we wanted. 227 was not the number I was going for. I don't know why I just did that. Okay. That looks pretty decent. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Now this next part is important so you can see this color underneath. Go ahead and right click on your layer one, click on blending options. You're gonna go down here to the blend if gray and you're just gonna move this current layer to one. All right, and you're gonna see that brown shade come in on the background, okay? The 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the hue and saturation of this layer, and you're going to see that insert itself in this white space. So you go to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. I'm going to change this to like a darker green color. You want to make sure that you click on this colorize right here, or else you're just going to get grayscale, and that's not what we want. And since this is a smart object, you will watch these blobs change every time that I change the setting. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to 110. I'm going to set the light, uh, the saturation to about 58. And I'm going to set this to negative 87. Now, you can play around with their colors depending on what you're looking for. Effect-wise, this is like a greener color, so I'm just trying to go for that basic, typical camo look. You're going to go ahead and click OK. That's it. We have our first layer done. Now you're just going to build up on this layer as many times as you'd like. So we're going to build up on this two times in this tutorial. And basically, all we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing. You can change the blur and the threshold and then the hue and saturation. So again, just play around with this. But to duplicate a layer, you can either go to the layer and right click and click on duplicate layer. And then I'll show you the keyboard shortcut if you're using Windows on the next layer. So for this one, I'm not going to mess with the blur at all, but I am going to mess with the threshold. So to do that, I'm just going to um, double click on threshold. And I'm just going to change this to a little bit higher of a number. And you're going to see like area fill in because using that green color, okay? Let's click on OK. And you're going to go into the hue and saturation and you're going to change the color. And here is where you, where you will see everything kind of transform. And all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change this lightness a little bit. And you'll watch and see what happens once that preview shows up. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and continue changing the threshold, you can do that depending on what kind of effect you're going for. Again, we set this one just a little bit higher, but you could drop it down to like 130 just to see. And obviously, that's not going to work for me, so I'm going to bring it up a little bit. And that looks pretty good. I'll keep it at the 160 versus the 153. Okay. Now, you're going to go ahead and duplicate this layer again. To do that, you can actually just hold the control key down on your keyboard and hit J. And it's going to duplicate that layer. So again, we're going to go back in and we're going to adjust this threshold. And blur. Or you can leave it the same. I'm just going to drop this down to 150. And then I'm going to go back to my hue and saturation. And here I'm actually going to mess with the hue. And I'm going to drop this down to about 92. And I'm going to drop the saturation down to 38. And see what that looks like. And it gives me kind of like that brownish, tannish color and click OK. So I'm actually pretty happy with this and honestly this is it. I'm done. That's how quick it takes to create one of these. So it took about you know eight or so minutes to go through the whole process and that's just because we're duplicating layers and you can see if you're looking in the smart object like what those colors are looking like um, and that you know brown fill in the back. So it's pretty straightforward. You can play around with the colors to get different effects. Um, I know that I had thrown up like a, I think I still have it open. It's like purplish one that I did earlier. And here with the blur, my blur was set much lower. So my blobs were more jagged than they were in the previous um, picture. But I like the way that it looked. So to me, that was pretty cool. And this was a good one too. Um, 
so what I ended up doing is creating this night really cool uh, camouflage you know American flag that I'll be putting up as a sublimation file in my shop um, just thought it was a really neat way to do something different using filters in Photoshop so again if you have any questions feel free to let me know by dropping a comment below and as always I would appreciate a like and subscribe because I stay more motivated when people are subscribing to my stuff and I can help people, you know, create new and cool things. So again, I hope everybody enjoyed and that you have a great night and are surviving this insane pandemic and picking up on new skills. So if there's something that you'd like to see, go ahead and drop a comment in the discussions tab on my YouTube channel and let me know what you'd like to see. I hope you guys have a great night.